Hey everyone, welcome to Strange Stories, where we explore near-death experiences and supernatural stories from people who've had a glimpse of the other side. If you enjoy our content, please consider liking the video and subscribing to our channel. Without further ado, let's get to the story of the day. I've always assumed that any abnormal experiences people have have a scientific explanation I'd always suspected that these events were the result of people's beliefs. I'd always considered myself to be rational enough to know that there's always a reasonable explanation for everything, until I went into the hospital for a routine procedure and had an out-of-body experience. It was the most terrifying, perplexing, and incredible thing that had ever happened to me. As I was being wheeled back from the theater, I awoke and informed the staff that I'd been awake. While I was supposed to be sleeping with my eyes and mouth taped, I described their conversations. I had also attempted to join in, not realizing that I wasn't there. I would have been eager to find a reasonable, scientific explanation for what was going on until the staff realized I was reading their minds. They were all terrified, as was I. I didn't realize I was doing it at first. It appeared to be very natural and like real speech. I was irritated by their remarks until they pointed out that I shouldn't have heard them. We must have had one of the strangest conversations in the operating room that week, me and the staff who came in and out of the room. I could see my day stretching out ahead of me for the next three months, which was terrifying, and I could describe personal details about the staff. A blue light also surrounded my hands. It was noticed by the staff. I'm not sure how long the whole thing lasted but it ended when I finally got some proper sleep. I felt like I was two people during this. I think that's the best way to put it. It was as if one person was lying on a trolley and the other was sitting up, but both were attempting to work together at the same time. I could see my arms and legs, but it was as if I were trapped inside a large boiler suit. To get my mouth to work, I had to move my jaw with my hand. I felt compelled to do everything in my power to alert the staff that I was awake. I was terrified because I was afraid they couldn't see me. I know I was trying to communicate with them during the procedure. I couldn't figure out why they couldn't hear me at the time. I believe it was this awareness that spoke to them right after. It felt very natural until I saw how terrified they were, and then I became terrified as well. The most important aspect of my experience was that it wasn't just a memory for three months. I believe this is due to a number of factors. While I was speaking with the staff and attempting to determine why I felt unsafe, I was also, as if in two places, planning my daily life for the coming weeks and months. So I believe there was a high risk of paranoia for a long time. Following that, it felt as if there was a constant conversation going on inside my head with the hospital staff who'd been in the room. It was a little upsetting, but not too bad. It felt like a vivid memory. Fortunately, I knew there would be a cutoff point if I could just get some sleep. Unfortunately, I had a disagreement with one of the doctors, the one who administered the anesthetic. So falling asleep wasn't easy. The cutoff point was now passed, and there was no triggers or things in my daily life that I recognize as being directly related to my time in the recovery room. Because I was terrified by what was happening, I tried to dismiss it as a reaction to the anesthetic, but one of the surgeons said, that doesn't explain why you're reading my mind. We then had a discussion along these lines. It's simply not possible. This appears to be happening due to my beliefs and associations. We took advantage of the opportunity to put this to the test. I'm not sure how wise this was, but I felt it was necessary because I still felt in grave danger and needed to inform them of it. I told the doctor some personal information about himself that no one else knew. He was both surprised and embarrassed. I took words from his head and repeated them to him. He confirmed the correctness. I did this to everyone on staff and asked them to tell me if I was correct. This is when they began to appear nervous. 
I got them to admit aloud that it's extremely unusual for a patient to awaken from anesthesia with the ability to read minds. Nonetheless, all of this can be explained rationally. During this time, I described some of the events that I was witnessing. One of them was the New Scientist cover, two months before publication, with a description of the cover and the date. Another was the BBC News 24 news headlines for January 7th. I requested that the doctor, the surgeon, write this down and keep an eye out for it. On that day, I witnessed the events unfold, one month after I had seen them. It felt like a vivid memory. Everyone in the room, including myself, was filled with skepticism. I also used the opportunity to confirm some of my observations with hospital personnel. I was afraid they would dismiss my concerns about the situation. My descriptions, which were confirmed to be correct at the time, included A breathing tube was being fed into my mouth through a black bung that had been placed between my teeth. It was made of soft rubber, was flat like a tape worm, and was riddled with tiny holes. Tape was used to keep it in place. The discussion among the employees, the anesthetist, wanted to know what time the shops closed. Why? To buy more shoes and handbags, said the doctor, who was assisting the anesthetist and whom I disliked. I attempted to participate, but apparently I couldn't because my eyes and mouth were taped shut. Then, there's the anesthesiologist who extracted my false tooth despite my request that she leave it in. Later in the recovery room, I saw the nurse replace it when I was still apparently asleep. The whiteboard just inside the door provided a description of the operating theater, but I couldn't read the writing for some reason. As the dressing slipped, I watched the doctor tape, unwrap, and rebandage my leg. I noticed plaster stuck to his fingers. Furthermore, he did not use stitches, only a small piece of tape to cover the two tiny wounds in my knee. The oxygen alarm went off with a ting, ting, ting just behind my head. This occurred throughout and I wondered why they didn't simply unplug it if it served no useful purpose. This is probably why I had a falling out with the previously mentioned doctor. Some of the facts were easy to confirm, while others became more perplexing as the strange conversation in the recovery room progressed. There's much more to say because, as I recall, I was able to absorb a massive amount of information both during the operation and for the next half hour. This was still before I went to sleep in my altered state. As it appeared, I had a general overview or a bird's eye view I could go on into a lot more detail about the actions of the people in the room, one in particular. In addition, I was able to concentrate very closely on where I needed to be or where there was danger. It was as if my mind were a television camera capable of focusing at close range. Essentially, I had the impression that I was witnessing events from multiple perspectives. When I went to bed, I felt like I was looking forward in time. I was no longer looking ahead when I awoke, but I had the strange sensation that I had seen and heard certain things before. It felt like I was reliving them. This was going on for three months. This was in December of last year. The sensation is gradually fading. It was both incredible and perplexing. I feel like I've changed forever in some ways, but it's also answered a lot of questions for me. It has affected me on many levels, and I believe it will continue to do so for some time. I took in so much information during the event that it will take me a lifetime to cover it all. On the plus side, it makes me feel small and insignificant, and it eliminates my previous worries and anxieties.